Today, we're going to be talking about the most important topic in number theory, and that is modular arithmetic. So what is modular arithmetic? Well, we'll be using these techniques in modular arithmetic to solve some very tricky problems at the end, and those problems will be almost impossible to solve without modular arithmetic, like this one over here. But let's start off with the basics of what modular arithmetic notation means. So we say a number n is congruent to a mod b if the number n leaves the remainder of a when divided by b. So for example, 13 is 3 mod 10 because it leaves the remainder of 3 when divided by 10. So an important property of modular arithmetic is that the, let's say a is x mod n and b is x mod n as well. Then the product of a b mod n is just the same thing as x y. Now, this may seem a little weird, but essentially what this is saying is, let's say you want to find the remainder when 111 times 23 is divided by 11. Now you can multiply it all out and divide, that's a bad way, or you can do something a little shorter. Basically, you can just take this number mod 11. 111 is equal, equivalent to 1 mod 11, because... 1 and 11, 1 and 11, 1 and 1, 1 and 1 and 1 leave the same remainder when divided by 11. So they're congruent, not equal, but congruent mod 11, as you can see here. Also, we have that 23 is congruent to 1 mod 11, because 23 is the same as 1 when divided, see, leave the same remainder as 1 when divided by 11. We have this over here. So this just becomes 1 times 1 equals 1 mod 11. So it leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by 11. So that's essentially what this is saying. Pro product of two numbers when the remainder by n is just the remainders of each of the numbers by n multiplied together. And this is very cool, isn't it? That you don't have to just multiply this whole thing out. Okay, so here's a cool example of this from the Amy. Find the remainder when 9 times 99 times 999, so on, all the way till, what is that? 999 nines is divided by 1,000. So there's absolutely no way we're multiplying this thing out. It's probably going to take you till next year's AMC 10 to do that. So is there anything faster and smarter we can do? Of course there is. The key thing here is we don't want the value of this whole expression. We just want the remainder when it's divided by 1,000 right here. This is all we care about. We don't care about anything past the last three digits. So by the modular arithmetic product rule, let's just find the values of all of these terms mod 1,000. So 9 is, well, it's just 9 mod 1,000. So 9 equal to 9 mod 1,000. 99 is 99 mod 1,000. There's nothing special about that. And now here's where things start to get interesting. 999, well, sure, it leaves the remainder of 999 when divided by 1,000. But it can also be written in terms of negative mods. Basically, what does that mean by negative mod? By negative mods, I mean that this is the same thing as negative 1 mod. Now you might be thinking, negative? You can have negative numbers as remainders. Well, you can't have them as remainders, but mods, they're the same thing. If you think about it, adding 1,000 to this gives 999. So they're the same, they, this leaves a remainder, the same, they are both leave the same remainder when divided by 1,000. So these are equivalent mod 1,000. So the advantage of writing it in this form is now we just have negative one. It's just like a simple number versus 999. Okay, now what about the next number? 9999. Nine, nine, nine. That's also 999 mod 1000. But remember, 999 nine, nine is equal to negative 1, or not equal, congruent to negative 1 mod 1000. And we can keep going, but we'll notice that this actually eventually becomes the same thing. 9999 nine, nine, nine is congruent to that's going to be congruent to neg negative 1 mod 1,000 as well. 
So what can we do from here? Well, the key thing is we're going to need to use this theorem here, this theorem right here. And this theorem states that if a equals x mod n, then a to the m is the same thing as x mod n. Okay, let's explore that, how we use that in this problem here. So what is all these, we have a bunch of terms, right? We have to multiply all of them together mod a thousand. How do we do that even? That seems like so hard, right? But the key thing is it's nine times 99 times, this is negative one mod a thousand times, the next term is also negative one mod a thousand, so on. So how many of these negative ones are we multiplying together? Well, there's a total of 999 terms, right? Because it goes all the way until 999 nines. And two of them are 9 and 99. So there, there's going to be a total of 997 negative ones. So what is the value of this mod 1,000? Well, remember the, the exponent rule? To find the value of this mod 1,000, it's just going to be negative 1 to the power of 997, which is just negative 1 mod 1,000. So 9 times 99 times negative 1 mod 1,000, which is negative 9 times 99 is 900 minus 9, 891. So negative 891 mod 1,000. And negative 891 mod 1,000 is very simple. It's just going to be equal to negative 891 mod 1,000, which is 109. Okay, so 109 is going to be the answer for this problem. Okay, so let's summarize what we did in this problem. First, what we did is we found 999 mod 1,000, and then we saw that all the remaining terms were negative 1 mod 1,000. So then we got this nice looking expression instead of this ugly looking expression, and we simplified it down pretty easily to get an answer of 109, which is the final answer for this problem right here. Cool trick, but like, again, like I mentioned earlier, we had this cool property. So for example, let's say we have to find 37 to the power of nine mod three. This is just equal to one to the power of nine mod three. Why? Or equivalent to, always like the three, the three lines is, means equivalent to. So it's not the same as equal to, for sure. So basically what that means is that because these two numbers are equivalent mod three, then they're and then the numbers to the power of any exponent are also the same mod three. And this is very useful. Okay, now let's take a look at an, another example that uses modular arithmetic. Let f be a subset one through 30 of one through 30 with the property that no pair of distinct elements in S has a sum divisible by five. What is the largest possible size of s okay so this for this problem the key is to realize that what does it mean for two numbers to sum to be divisible by five well the possibilities mod five or we can either have a number that leaves a remainder of one when divided by five plus another number that leaves a remainder of four when divided by five or we can have a number that leaves a remainder of two when divided by five plus another number leaving a remainder of three when divided by five. Or we can have two numbers that both leave a remainder of zero when divided by five. Those are the only possibilities for remainders that will add up. Now, why, is, why are these the only possibilities? Well, because all other possibilities will, not, will always result in having some kind of remainder. Because one plus four is five, two plus three is five, and the other cases, three plus two, and four plus one are essentially the same thing. They're, they're the same thing because they're just, the things flip together, like you just flip the numbers. So it's not really a different case. So that's why these are the only cases. So what does that mean? We don't want a sum divisible by five. So that means we cannot have a number that both leaves a remainder of one when divided by five and four when divided by five. Similarly, we can't have a remainder of two, uh, a number with the remainder of two when divided by five, and a number with the remainder of three when divided by five. It just doesn't work because it will result in the condition being violated. And we also can't have 
two numbers that leave a remainder of zero when divided by five. But can we have just one? Yes, we can have one number that leaves a remainder of zero when divided by five because it says that no pair of distinct elements. So if we just have a five in there and no other multiples of five, it's not gonna add, a, add, add anything to produce a multiple of five. Sure, it's a multiple of five on its own, but that doesn't matter. So essentially what this means is out of these six multiples of five from one to 30, one work, one, only one will work. So therefore, like, for, like, cause if you have two that work, then we'll have two numbers that sum to the remainder of zero and divided by five. So now we know that only one of them can work, can be part of our subset. But what about for these ones and fours and twos and threes? What do we do about them? Well, we can't have both one and four mod five in our subset. So, but we can't have, we can have as many ones as we'd like as long as there's no fours. So let's say that we have no fours, mod, no four mod five numbers in our subset. Then we can have as many one mod five numbers as we'd like. And how many numbers are one mod five from one to 30? Well, well, you can think about dividing one through 30 into six groups, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 10, so on, all the way till 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So out of every one of these six groups, exactly one of them, exactly one of the numbers in one of those groups has a remainder of one when divided by five. So therefore we have a total of six numbers, six. So we can have six multiples of six numbers that leave a remainder of one when divided by five. But we can't have any numbers that leave a remainder of four when divided by five. So now we can actually reverse this too. We could have no numbers leaving a remainder of one and all six, all six of the numbers that leave a remainder of four. Now, why do we take all six of them and not just maybe two or three of them? Because you're trying to find the largest possible size for S. Okay, so six, good. Now, what about multiple, what about the second condition? It's essentially the same thing. We can either have six, multi six remainders of two or six remainders of three. So another six. Or this is for one mod five, and this is two mod five. So in total, we have six plus six plus one, remember the multiple of five, equals 13. So that's our answer. Let's summarize. First, we took the cases where they have to add up to zero mod five. Then we saw that we could have one multiple of five, but not two or more. And then we saw that the best possible case for us is to have six ones or six twos, or we could flip them as well, but they're symmetric. So it doesn't really matter. So that's how we solve this problem. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about digit cycles and Euler's totient theorem, along with some other cool exponent examples. But we'll be discussing all of that in the next video. You can check it out, it's looking right there.